Hello and welcome to Wake Up and Smell the Mic S&P 500 Review for Friday, April 21st, 2023. It's now the 20th. We start off in the S&P 500 daily chart in Denmark looking back to end of December 2021. I'll zoom into the current area now. The S&P 500 has printed the combo and sequential by setup one count. And to negate that for end of day on the 21st, there must be a close above 4151.32 for the price flip to the sell setup count one. And that's the second time in this run up that the sell setup count was negated at sell setup count eight. So if you've heard any of the experts on the media talking about this is a pain trade up to 4300 or beyond I'm saying now 4500 this qualified supply projection here 4465.24 that this is what they mean by having those glimmers of hope of printing the cell setup nine end count that cannot be taken away and losing it on the eight count and the close pullback was enough to print a 50 percent disqualified momentum up at 4139.48 giving us the disqualified exhaustion up for 50 percent at 4164.39 a close above the disqualified momentum up level here end of day in the 21st and that's qualified if it decides to keep going and get above that then they both get qualified and will be thinking of more upside again and there was a small breach of the cloud conversion line as low as 4114.57 Cloud conversion line was at 4121.01 to start the day on the 20th. And the low came within two points of the demand line at 4112.13 for the 20th. And for the 21st, that level will be at 4123.35. And open and close below the demand line would be required to get that qualified for tomorrow on the 21st. If it opens above the demand line and then subsequently closes underneath it for end of day on the 21st, it will be disqualified. And when that happens, when the demand line gets disqualified, that's a fading opportunity sometimes just like this one became disqualified here and then there was some more upside for four or five more days so that could happen again by getting that ongoing demand line disqualified and there's a new ongoing supply line here which for the 21st will be at 4168.96 and a close above that level end of day on the 21st and that gets qualified same thing goes for this ongoing supply line above it and the channel 3 low and lower stark band are traveling right on top of each other within 80 cents or so so that should be last ditch support if it breaks that demand line and conversion line and heads down you can see on these bars over here, the 13th and the 10th, that it did breach underneath the Stark band, and but it subsequently went back up. So once it breaches these Stark bands in black, that's quite extreme, and you could expect a reversal. Here's the S&P 500 daily cloud chart. And you can see that 26 days forward, the top of the cloud is flat at around 
4,000 or so and then the bottom of the cloud 26 bars back this whole stretch right here is about 3980 or so so within 20 points of each other so I can see if there's a precipitous drop that it could go down to the top of the cloud here and the lagging line could make it down to the bottom here and that would be very good support and if the baseline stays around that area that would be even better and to be pragmatic as the way things have been going I could see a pretty good bounce off of this 4000 area if it makes it down that far and especially for the next seven days that the baseline 26 bars back from this section here down to about there is going to add to the support for the lagging line 26 bars back and then it takes a dip for several days but then comes back up so if it happens within the next seven days and it's pretty good support and then the next 20 days or so it would be right back there again and the baseline would be up here again 26 bars looking forward and for those that don't know the baseline is a 26 EMA and the REI for the S&P 500 daily went under its overbought line so now we'll be looking for it to reach zero neutral or head back down under this oversold line see the previous in-depth video for explanations of these indicators here to marker one is under its overbought line 59.53 and the rock went under its overbought line and is in its neutral zone the ADX is still weak needs to get above 20 to prove that this uptrend here has some strength and the DMI plus is still above the DMI minus but it looks like they're forming a pincher here okay everybody turn their head around backwards we're going to look at this contra indicator ATM trigger and it has this pressure line here that you can see came off of a bottom that's at the bottom there at negative two so it came off of there and headed up and caught most of this uptrend and then as it got to the top there's an indicator up here that shows the long-term overbought P alert up and that's almost up to its top here at 102 for the trend strength and pressure down so what happens is when that reaches the top that normally this goes down the price will head down and it's a little bit of a lagging indicator you can see a good example back here I'll find one well we didn't have to look too far over here on February 13th the long-term overbought pressure alert up was printed and you can see the pressure was still up here for pressure down when it's up it's called down and then it finally started heading down here just in time for it to bottom out around here and then you can see how it heads down and then it finishes up the down here and then actually starts heading up so think contra indicator and there's a slow trigger here and a fast one here and when everything converges above this overbought line at 75 like this that's a pretty good indication of a downdraft and it's already started here but it can go on for a while and live above this 
overbought line for a while. I'll try to find an example of that. I couldn't find any decent examples without having to go back years. So, yeah, that's quite rare to see them all up here for the S&P 500. Even during that run-up from July 2022 into August, you can see the pressure went up here. And maybe the slow trigger stayed up there for a while until it started rolling over a few bars after reaching the peak here. So maybe four or five bars and then the fast trigger was up there but then rolled over right away as it's the fast trigger. And the Shande indicator went down to 31.73. It was at 51.27 yesterday. And you got to watch when that gets under zero like this, then you know you're in a pretty good downtrend like this one here. They were all under zero. This one back here went under zero somewhere like right around here. And then had a pretty good downdraft. And the Williams percent R did make it below its overbought line here today. And the psychological line is still right at 50. That hasn't making a break for either down or up. So that needs to be monitored there. And again, that's indicating an equal amount of buyers and sellers. So there's out there people are buying and there's people out there selling just about even and the MACD difference between the MACD and the signal line is headed down and almost to zero so that means there's a cross under imminent and I put the lines on so that you can see that about six more points or so and it will be under its signal line RSI hasn't made it above 70 for a while just one day here so I actually lowered the bar to 65 and it's pretty much hit it and is headed down and the ultimate oscillator is headed down it hit its 70 overbought line here so that's headed down a bit and I added the commodity channel index and that's below its overbought area now. And the long term KST here and intermediate term are still in upwards trajectories. Looks like the intermediate is trying to plane out these past few days. Same thing with the long term. The trajectory has bumped down a little bit. And the short term KST is just slightly in a downwards trajectory. The S&P 500 support and resistance levels big board chart shows the gray areas at the pivot point S1, the ongoing demand line, and the daily conversion line. Price in the pre-market hours for the S&P 500 at 5.39 a.m. on the 21st is 41.23. To the downside, price breaks into the 4000 zone, S2. The daily horizontal line support the 20 simple moving average and the 21 EMA. And to the upside is the weekly channel 3 high, daily ongoing supply line R2 and R1 and the rock 1 is still hovering right around its zero line at negative 0.60 ATR2 is well into its green zone and the PPO extreme bumped down quite a bit to 2.96 percent above zero so that puts it below this PPO level 5 at about 3 percent and to the downside is PPO level 6 at 1.67 
and price starts going after these averages here the 20 simple moving average and the 21 EMA and the D wave up wave 2 will print at that level and the New York traditional McClellan breath oscillator to get back to zero would require 47 decliners over advancers to get back to zero have a great day